we are talking Pandemonium. And this is written and directed by a gentleman called Quarks. That's it, just Quarks. So Pandemonium is a uh, French movie that's being put out by Arrow. And Arrow asked me to review it, and um, I didn't want a trailer or anything like that. And when I kind of read the description, it, it kind of said it was like an art house film. And I was like, oh, I, I'm not a huge fan of art house or surreal movies. But they had a couple of kind of screenshots. And I thought, even though I'm not a fan of art house films necessarily, these screenshots really captured me. I thought, that looks really interesting. So I, I thought I would give it a watch. And let me tell you a little bit about the story. So... It's effectively an anthology movie, um, but the movie does have a kind of a central character, at least for the most part. So we have our first story, which is kind of the overreaching story, where there is an automobile accident and a car has hit a motorbike. And the movie starts right at that point, and we see, see two characters, two guys, getting up from the road, and talking about it now it's pretty established early on that they have died and this is the spirits of the two people involved talking about what has happened and it's all on this kind of misty road it starts to kind of snow it will very much make you think of like the silent hill properties in regards to that sort of cinematography and the, the mysterious sort of you know you can't see beyond the fog and things and um, it's a very interesting life after death story. And ultimately, it's, it does have a somewhat of a religious angle to it, but it's not like it's preaching necessarily. Um, so if you're, I mean, I'm an atheist, but, uh, you know, I think you can enjoy this regardless, if that makes sense. But ultimately, the, the story focuses on these, well, one of the guys in particular, this our main character Nathan and effectively having to deal with the becoming effectively a ghost and what comes next and we have these kind of two doors that appear on one uh, you can kind of hear singing and and joyfulness and the other one you can hear screaming you can kind of guess where that's going um, I won't go too much into detail but ultimately um, we end up in hell uh, but I won't say how we get there. Um, and then we have a couple of sequences, a couple of kind of stories where a character is having to relive some of the tragedy that has befalled a couple of people who are in hell. And they kind of, we see the story of ultimately what has brought them there. And then we kind of get a kind of a... a um, an ending so to speak to our sort of our main character so that's your kind of your basic story let me go through it in a little bit more detail and we'll kind of go through it story by story so the main story which is the first kind of introduction and then we get little snippets in between the two other ones and then the kind of the finale i thought this was excellent um it, it's kind of our house but it, it, it makes sense in context for what you're watching and let me tell you, someone who is not religious, this, this I think, uh, really hammers home the idea of going to hell and the suffering that is involved in that. I thought it was a very interesting idea about morality. I think it's a very interesting idea about perceived morality, about judging what you might feel is okay, but maybe what is not uh, okay according to certain religious scriptures, shall we say. I thought it was done very, very well. So I thought the messages um, were, were were well handled. And again, even for someone who is not religious themselves, I think, do you know what? This is a great sort of cautionary tale. If you were religious, you would think, man, you definitely don't want to be going to hell. And the, the movie actually, this section of the movie actually has some quite humorous moments in it. It is not a comedy exactly, but there are some funny exchanges from some of our characters and I quite liked it. The the kind of the nonchalant way that they're kind of somewhat dealing with it, I thought was, but it didn't seem out of place. 
I thought the whole, the cinematography was amazing. It really looked very ethereal. I thought it was very, very strong visually. Both the kind of our world and when we kind of see elements of uh, what's kind of going through uh, the underworld, should we say? Strong, strong visually. The acting, I thought was great. It's a French movie, it's French language, so you're reading subtitles, but I thought the acting was subtle and I thought it was kind of the characters, you got a good sense of who they are. And just with the kind of the physical acting, the, the, the tone of voice, you know, I think it really perceived these characters very well. So I, and I thought the, the, the whole story was thoroughly interesting and engaging. So that opening sequence, the opening story, so to speak, the little segments in between and the finale, that's all I'm talking about. That is really, really strong. Now, we also have two other stories for when uh, our main character is seeing the, the, um, the circumstances where a couple of other people in hell have, have, have turned up there. Now, in one story, we have this little girl who is murderous, to, to say a, uh, uh, to put it frankly, and she's a very wealthy, comes from a wealthy family, and she's psychotic, for lack of a better word, and we see the circumstances to why she's ended up in hell, that also involves this like deformed guy that they've the family have been um, seemingly ke keeping captive in caves underneath the, uh, the the house. She's got a little sister. It, some of the kind of the sequences that they're not gory, but it is quite shocking. About it, there's some suggested things here that are actually quite shocking. I, I, again, I won't say what. This one, it w was a little bit more obscure. I wasn't quite sure. It, certainly there's a character called Tony the Monster. That's what they call him in the, in the film. And um, he's this like deformed guy who has seemed to have been held captive for all his life. There's very little context about the actual circumstance about what has happened and, until this point. So this movie leaves you feeling like there's a lot more on the table. Don't be expecting to be fully sort of up to speed about the circumstances, about what has happened with this one. And there are elements here, for example, where the character of Tony can't see his own reflection. So it's kind of making you think, is this like a figment of her imagination? Uh, but then there's some physical things that wouldn't make sense that, uh, that Tony has to carry physical things that this little girl simply wouldn't be able to do. So it's a, it's a little unclear about what's kind of going on in this one, I have to say. And uh, you know, it's strong, again, it's strong visually. The the makeup is, is effective. I think the acting again is solid. It's just a little bit unclear about exactly what is kind of going on. Um, so this, again, that's fitting into that sort of that art house surreal Elements. I, which I, I thought the, the kind of the overreaching story was completely um, sort of you know you could kind of understand it properly, but this one had some elements. As does the second kind of mini story, which involves this woman who is very busy at work and she has a teenage daughter that she's kind of not paying attention to, and this daughter is getting severely bullied and uh, is almost crying for help from her mother. But her mother ultimately tells her to kind of suck it up. And um, the circumstances of what happens with that ends up in tragedy. And the mother can't accept it. And again, it's very powerful. It's very, um, very well acted. There's, there's a little sequence in it again, which you thinking, huh, is that? Because there's something that happens which is almost supernatural. Which, if you're in hell, I guess you would think it would happen. But this is, I think, is meant to be happening in the real world. Again, it's not entirely clear about the circumstances and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's it's well acted, it's well put together, and I think it's a cautionary tale about looking for the signs of, um, you know, bullying and, uh, you know, your children trying to tell you things and, uh, you know, you're just busy with your own life and you're kind of ignoring the kind of the warning signs and then not being able to accept, ultimately, the uh, the... The, the, the what happens after things are left unchecked so again it's very powerful um and it's not explicit
but it's quite disturbing. It's quite dark. What I would say is there's a scene of a uh, caesarean, and it, I have to say it looks like it's a real caesarean. If you're not, it's a very well done prosthetic uh, in this one, uh, in this movie in total. But it's, uh, just to let you know, there is a little bit of gore, and it looks. It, I, I had the feeling it might be real. Um, anyway, so overall, I found this movie extraordinarily well put together, thoroughly engaging, if not a little confusing from time to time, certainly within those two segments at least. Um, but the overreaching uh, story I found captivating and definitely I think it really, if you're a believer in, let's say, in, in the, the, the possibility of going to hell and what torture might look like in many ways you haven't thought. I think it doesn't, certainly the finale, excellent. A really hammers home thinking, oh, that, do you know what? I haven't thought about it like that. If that would happen, you wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> you know, uh, so I thought that was very well. And it kind of ends on on almost like a, I don't know 100% whether I would have gone for the ending. And the ending is quite interesting, but it almost sets up a, you want to kind of what know what happens next because I feel it ends in a way which is leaves you on somewhat the tender hooks. It's not exactly sequel baiting, but the ending I feel is that there's a, <clears throat> a a resolution about what happens. It feels a little rushed, I will say, and then kind of like it ends and I'm thinking, hmm, interesting, but I don't know if I, I, I feel it needed a little bit more context. So this movie I thought was very good. It lacks a little bit of context here and there. Um, now, if you're a art house fan, then you may not care. You just want to watch it for the art on screen and for all that, it's very good. But um, if you prefer a more of a consistent narrative, it's there in part. Certainly the main story, but for me, I think the the, the two, uh, uh, certainly the first one, the first one involved in this murderous little girl really lacked a little bit of clarity about what was supposed to be happening and the second one to a degree but yeah it's a solid movie um solid movie all around i'll give this one do you know what i'm gonna give it i'll give it a seven out of ten because i feel um the, the narrative is a little still a little bit on the uh uneven side but it's still an excellent movie all around uh it's a recommend if you don't mind somewhat of a vague narrative anyway would you see it have you seen it please do let me know what your thoughts are and i shall look forward to seeing you next time bye for now